Hello, this is Kim Birchill. I'd like to use this video to introduce some concepts regarding the use of DREZ lesions for brachial plexus avulsion pain syndrome. If you've seen a patient with this syndrome, you know how severe this pain is and how desperate these patients are to achieve some relief. I believe that DREZ lesions are a very effective way to surgically manage this type of pain and in fact represent a unique opportunity to assist with a severe pain syndrome otherwise intractable to essentially all other modalities. I will use this video to discuss the mechanism of injury, some of the imaging characteristics of this condition, as well as the surgical procedures involved in creating the DREZ lesions. As you probably know, the mechanism of injury in these patients is cranial cervical. Typically in a helmeted motorcyclist thrown off their vehicle, whereupon they strike a fixed obstacle such as a pole or tree. The head is thrust contralateral to the injury and the ipsilateral shoulder is pushed violently downward. This mechanism produces downward forces on the brachial plexus and results in a vulsion of the dorsal and ventral roots. This may affect all roots in the brachial plexus from C5 to T1. Examination of the patient demonstrates a flaccid ipsilateral upper extremity that is both insensate and areflexic in the distribution of the avulsed nerve roots, often from C5 through T1. If the injury is chronic, the patient will show atrophy of the affected muscles. The patient may also have a Horner syndrome, which indicates that the T1 nerve root has been injured with indirect injury to the superior cervical ganglion. Electrophysiologically, and after several weeks, an EMG will show widespread muscle denervation relating to the avulsion of the ventral roots. Paradoxically, the nerve conduction study is usually normal due to the preganglionic nature of the injury. That is, the dorsal root ganglion is avulsed with the dorsal root, thus preserving the integrity of the peripheral nerves despite their separation from the spinal cord. Brachial plexus avulsion pain syndrome can be strongly suspected from the mechanism of injury and also the patient's examination. However, imaging can be quite helpful in confirming the diagnosis. Pseudomeningocele seen on MRI imaging are probably the most characteristic MRI finding. Finding pseudomeningoceles on MRI confirms a mechanism of injury although it is not likely that you will find pseudomeningocele formation at every involved spinal level. Oftentimes, pseudomeningoceles would be seen at only one or two levels, which confirms the mechanism of injury. On occasion, a defect at the dorsal root entry zone of the spinal cord can also be visualized on axial MRI. Prominent defects at the entry zone related to the avulsion may also negatively influence the pain relief outcome from DREZ lesions. The spinal cord may also be shifted either towards or away from the side of the avulsions. On this axial T2 MRI you can see a large pseudomeningocele in the mid cervical region which extends well out into the neural foramen. This probably represents the most characteristic imaging finding with brachial plexus avulsion. Pseudomeningocele formation can also be seen on the coronal projection of the T2 MRI as shown here at the level of T1. Occasionally a defect at the dorsal root entry zone can be seen on T2 axial MRI imaging. We have found that this is a negative prognostic indicator for pain relief after DREZ lesioning, as I indicated previously. The goal of DREZ lesions for brachial plexus avulsion pain syndrome 
is to make an incision in the spinal cord directly in the region of the nerve root avulsions. The Dres lesions are performed from intact root to intact root. Given the violent nature of the injury, the surface of the spinal cord may be marked by abnormal vascular anatomy, particularly by small irregular veins along the Dres. The goal of the surgery is to make a series of lesions along the Dres which has been affected by the root avulsions. The lesions can be created either with a micro-knife and bipolar cautery or a series of radiofrequency lesions using an RF probe. The rationale for Dres lesions is to eliminate the output of wide dynamic range neurons located in the nucleus proprius of the spinal cord, laminas 4 and 5 deep to the superficial dorsal horn laminae 1 through 3. These WDR cells are thought to become pathologically hyperactive after the dorsal root avulsion, producing a central neuropathic pain. Notice in this figure that the superficial layers of the dorsal horn laminae 1 through 3 have been avulsed, exposing the nucleus proprius, making lamina 4 and 5 the most superficial layer of the dorsal horn. The DRES procedure involves destruction of these WDRs in the nucleus proprius, which appear to be the source of the pain syndrome. The DRES lesion procedure is performed with the patient under general anesthesia, prone and in pins. A midline skin incision is made from C2 to T1, and then once the fascia is exposed and the spinous process is identified, the procedure becomes unilateral on the side of the injury, sparing the spinous processes and interspinous ligament. A hemilaminectomy is performed from C3 to T1. I do find that it is more efficient to perform a more extensive laminectomy than possibly needed, rather than performing additional laminectomy after the dura has been opened, if in fact the fully denervated segment of the spinal cord is not fully exposed initially. A paramedian durotomy is carried out and then the microscope is brought into position. It is particularly important for the microscope to be used for most of the remaining procedure given the detailed anatomy and the distortion of the surface of the spinal cord as a result of the avulsion injury. Once the dura has been opened, the microscope is used to identify the remaining intact dorsal roots, both superior and inferior to the nerve root avulsions. The Dres lesions are performed from intact root to intact root. The identification of the dorsolateral sulcus is perhaps the most difficult aspect of this procedure. Since a long area of the spinal cord may be completely denuded from dorsal rootlets, leaving little to mark the root entry zone. The surgeon should be able to identify some pits where the dorsal roots have been avulsed. Often there is a small longitudinal vein laying just lateral to the root entry zone. In essence, the surgeon uses every visible clue to determine the line of the injured root entry zone. I perform the Dres lesions with a micro knife and micro bipolar. I perform what I call a skip dresotomy, meaning that a series of 10 millimeter linear lesions are made discontinuously, separated by two millimeters of intact pia. I have found that if a longer continuous dresotomy is performed, the underlying dorsal horn tends to herniate through the lesion, producing a deeper and more extensive lesion than intended. The skip lesion accomplishes the same goal without the eversion of the spinal cord through the lesion. As noted previously, the initial surgical approach for Dres lesioning is straightforward. Once the spinous processes have been identified, the procedure is then conducted unilaterally, sparing the spinous processes and interspinous ligament. A laminectomy is performed from C3 to T1. Under the microscope, a paramedian durotomy is performed and the dura is tacked up to afford exposure of the dorsolateral spinal cord over the affected levels. 
Once the spinal cord is exposed, it should become obvious where the nerve root avulsions have occurred, as well as the superior and inferior most intact dorsal rootlets. In this case, the last intact nerve root, probably C4, is identified superiorly. Under high magnification, the area of the dorsolateral sulcus is identified. Several pits are shown here in the sulcus in the area of the prior nerve root avulsions. A microbipolar cautery is then used to create a devascularized area for the Dres incisions to be created with a micronife. The micronife is then used to make a 10 millimeter longitudinal incision, approximately 2 millimeters deep, at the root entry zone, precisely along the course of the dorsal lateral sulcus. As the surgeon moves away from the area of the intact dorsal rootlets, superiorly and inferiorly, identification of the root entry zone may be more difficult. In this example, the root entry zone is visualized by the pits in the spinal cord and the small longitudinal vein running just lateral to the root entry zone. Here we see the first intact nerve root inferior to the nerve root avulsions. The intact root, as well as pitting and discoloration of the root entry zone, identifies the sulcus. In this example from another case, we see that the small vein lies directly over the root entry zone and must be sacrificed. Note also that when this vein was coagulated, the underlying pits became more apparent. Once the root entry zone has been devascularized, the Dres incisions are created, after which the microbipolar is placed inside the incision and coagulation is carried out to a depth of approximately two millimeters. As mentioned, the anatomy of the root entry zone may be quite distorted. In this case, you can see several veins overlying the root entry zone with visible pitting. The bipolar is used to coagulate these veins, but note that the small artery crossing the root entry zone is spared. The bipolar cautery is used within the Dres lesions at a setting of between 20 and 25. Note that the peel bridge separating the Dres incisions is separately coagulated. To recap, once the dura is opened and the spinal cord exposed, the first order of business is to identify as many of the pits in the spinal cord resulting from the nerve root avulsions as is possible. This allows the surgeon to establish a line of attack in the spinal cord which traverses the line of the dorsal root entry zone from intact root to intact root. The lesions are discontinuous and created with a micronife and microbipolar. Once the Dres lesions have been completed, a watertight dural closure is accomplished and then routine fascial and cutaneous closures are completed. I hope that this video has improved your understanding of Dres lesions for brachial plexus avulsion pain. If you have any questions regarding the procedure, feel free to contact me via our website at ohsu.edu neurosurgery. Thank you very much.